what up what up what up this is mike the philosopher here with another one this one is divorce court all right um i ain't gonna hold you let's go in court is now in session the honorable judge star presiding your honor this is the case of herod versus parham thank you very much miss herod mr parham Ms. Harrod, you're in court today because you say you fell in love with your fiance's representative. You say Mr. Parham is an alcoholic, has a problem with gambling, and he's not supported. You are demanding he seek and get help or the wedding is off. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Parham, you desperately want to save... Can I say something once? Um, I know what women are thinking. Oh, that looks so nice. She got the fuchsia shirt with the fuchsia hair. Fuchsia? I, I'm plum? I don't know. I'm a guy. I don't know colors like that. They don't really matter to me. It looks more, maybe it looks more plum than fuchsia, but still. Wh what happened to black? <laughs> um... I just, I don't know. I, I, I put it this way. I have a soft spot for natural hair colors. Okay. Um, women with hair that not only they didn't grow, but couldn't possibly be a real hair color. Just screams out attention to me. Uh, I need attention. Um, it's almost like a red flag almost to me. Um, I'm not saying anything is wrong with ladies with, you know, multi hair colors and the the blondes. And I know <laughs> this chick named Rashina, she couldn't stay away from the blonde. And more and more sisters just don't like black hair no more. It's it's a red hair, yellow hair, blue hair, multicolored hair, fuchsia hair. At this point, I'm not sure of women doing that for men or for other women. I, I'm just not sure. Put it in the comments, ladies. Uh, do y'all think that men really care if your hair is fuchsia or plum? You really think men looking at that? I'd be curious to know. I just want to know who you're wearing it for. If you went, if, like, if I'm being honest, that screams sisterhood hair. Because you're wearing it for the sisters. You're not wearing it for the men. I don't know any man who say, I like a chick with blue hair. Okay? I want her Smurfette style. I haven't heard a guy say that. I'm just saying. Okay? Marge Simpson. <laughs> Let's go in. Your Honor. And Mr. Parham, you desperately want to save your relationship, you say. You don't believe you have a problem with alcohol. You say Ms. Harrod is a workaholic and needs to make more time for you. You say you love your fiance and want to shift the focus back to your wedding. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we have a witness who is here that has joined us. We're going to get through all the facts today. So I see a crossroads here of two people who are supposed to be planning a wedding at this point. Ms. Harrod, why are we in court today? Your Honor, I am here to give my fiance an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. If he don't check into an AA, then I'm checking out of the relationship. We have a wedding in October. I have to say though, she she looks nice. <laughs> she do look nice with it. Um, the way it's done and it matches her outfit and stuff, it does look nice. I, I give it up to her, okay? I give it up to her, but it's still not a preference. It's it's still doing too much, okay? But it looks nice. And our, we won't be having a wedding. He is a angry alcoholic, and he have a gambling addiction, and I won't change. You are demanding change, or the wedding is off? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Parham, did you hear what Ms. Harrod said? I did, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Harrod, take me back to how you all met and what brings us to court today? I, Your Honor, I met Michael on online dating 
And I was in a marriage for 15 years and lost my husband at 38 of colon cancer. Oh my goodness. Mm. And a year later, I had lost my brother. He got murdered. Oh. So That's a lot of tragedy. I had a lot of trauma. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Michael restored my happiness. And, you know, I got in a relationship and that's when the real Michael starts to reveal. Um, once we got, our, we got a house, a really big, nice house, and I started to live with him, and I started to see um, a Michael drinking every day. You know, it's so interesting because I have. You ain't seen me drinking every day. <laughs> uh, oh, not not this Michael. Okay, I was just gonna say I don't I don't I don't drink like that. Anyway, oh, let's go on. Always had this theory that the first 18 months of a relationship, you are dating the person's representative, their agent. That's but it. then the real client shows up. That's it. Was that your experience? Yes, that's my experience. Okay, Mr. Parham, tag, you're it. Absolutely. Well, first, Your Honor, good morning. I wanted to say, look, I'm here because I'm committed to salvaging my relationship. I love this woman to pieces. I'm not perfect, I have my flaws, but so does she. I don't have a drinking problem. The last yes, 30, he does. Excuse me, the last 30 days, I lost two cousins 30 days apart. And that, it, caused, it caused me to drink a little more than I wanted to. In the last 30 days? In the last 30 but days. But this does not sound like a discussion that was occurring in the last 30 days. Let me find out if there are more. Ms. Harrod? Yes. Your Honor, my grandmother passed away, and we go to St. Louis. And um, he get to meet my family for the first time and everything. That's important. We at the repass. We both having a drink. We having a good time. And we went out to a bar and he was so wasted. Me and my family had to carry him out of the mm, bar. I remember that at all. When he woke up, I said, Michael, you was so messed up last night. I'm so embarrassed in front of my family. And he was like, we didn't go out last night. Again, I don't recall We just that. went to the repass. Miss Hera, my fiance, is very exaggerant or whatnot. No, you... Nah, bruh. <laughs> nah, nah, bruh. She not gonna make that up. And I'm, I'm sure her family can verify, especially if they had to carry you out of the establishment. Just because you don't remember it. You know why you don't remember it? You was too drunk to remember it, okay? You was toe up, flow up. All right. I'm going I'm to hold what I'm saying right now, but uh, let's hear some more. You don't remember because you was drunk. You never remember. Mr. Yeah. Parham, mm, excuse me. Yes, Your Honor. You know you went to the repast. And everybody was drinking. Everybody But was you drinking. have no recollection of anything after that. I have no recollection. And we was there two hours. I have no recollection of what she's referring to. What's your last recollection of that evening? Where were you? We were at the club, and we made it home safely. Your Honor, I have another situation. <laughs> I'm listening. Michael is to the point where he knows his alcohol is a problem. So he hides it and masks it. He put on cologne and brushes his teeth and everything. I check his man cave. That's where he do all his damage yet. And I goes in the man cave and I look, you know, nothing in there. I come home from work and I open the drawer and it's two bottles of alcohol that he hid in there. I asked him, was he drinking? He was like, no, I haven't been drinking. How am I drinking? I How have am I hiding? evidence, Your Honor, well, okay, that I submitted to the Honor. court. Wait a minute. First of all, let me see what evidence you're talking about. That's the first thing I want to do, is see the evidence. And you're suggesting that these bottles... Ooh, that gray goose, okay. That gray goose will get you loose. <laughs> Let me say, let me say this, man. Hey, if you hide an alcohol, if you're hiding it, it's a problem. It's a problem, bro. You know, if you go to an AA meeting, the first thing you have to do is admit you have a problem. <laughs> Clearly, you haven't went to no meetings because you ain't even get through step one yet. And that's admitting that you got a problem. But if you start hiding a great goose so you can get loose later on, you uh, that's, that, that's a problem, bro. And you got two bottles there, okay? That 
them, them waters. All right. <laughs> Let's go in. Bottles of alcohol were, quote, hidden. Yeah, I've yes, been hiding from the children. Because he told me he did not have a drink. I said, did you drink today? He said, no, I have not had a drink. Ms. Parm, did you tell the truth? Yes. I was not drinking. And like I said, I put that in my um, in my file cabinet or whatnot, Your Honor. So again, mm -hmm. I'm keeping it out this of the way This is what he drinks every day. I'm Mr. Not... Parham, every day. Let's, let's cut to the chase. Let's cut to the chase, yeah. No. Do you have a drinking problem? I don't think so. How often do you drink? I drink water every day. Does that make me a water yeah, Excuse me, Does Mr. Does that make Parham, me a water -holic? Here's the thing. Water I want to be real clear. Body. And Ms. Harrod, let's, let, let's not even play games. Mr. Parham. I don't care if you're drunk, because you're not my fiance. You came into my courtroom, and you said you wanted to save your relationship. But if you're going to play games, then you, we can cut this off right now, all right? Because here's the deal. Either you want help or you don't. If you want help, I'm here to help you. If you don't, then we can roll on out. Everybody can get an early lunch. <laughs> this is not a joke for me. This is real relationships, and this young lady is engaged to you, and there are children that are involved. And if you are drinking to excess, that is putting your health in danger and the health of your family in danger. So again, I ask you, how often do you have a drink? I drink sometimes every day. I don't have a drinking problem. You say that this is... Oh, listen, I think that probably everybody, everybody in the world probably has that one family member that is a raging drunk. Okay? This guy happens to be that family member. <laughs> You know, and I ain't go front. I got, I got them too. I'm sure y'all got them too. How do you fix your lips to say, I drink every day, but I don't think it's a problem. Come on, bro. You're not, you're not, that's not normal. I don't know if you know this, but that's not normal. That is called an alcoholic okay you have to go to those meetings so they can help you understand that you have a problem here here's the here here's the type of thing i think is going to happen this guy is not going to realize it's a problem until it's a problem what do i mean by that until he get in a car accident until he hurts somebody doing something until he hurt himself doing something okay until you know somebody rob him or somebody like he not gonna realize it's a problem until he feel the pain from it losing his girl <laughs> that ain't pain okay he can always replace it, girl. He brushes, you know, shoulders off and keep it pushing. Losing his girl is not painful enough. I'll put it that way. And it should be. You know, this woman has been through a lot. She says she lost her husband at 38 to cancer. She lost her brother who was taken out and I think another reason why she's trying to get away is because she ain't trying to lose him over doing some dumb ish okay she can already see the tragedy that's going to happen with this guy and she can't bear to deal with that I don't blame her okay I don't blame her this brother got to come to terms with the fact that he got a problem. And he said, oh, well, she got problems, too. Yeah, well, I, I'm, 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 I can almost bet they ain't half what the problems you got. If you love her enough, 
just say, okay, I will cut back. He's not even saying he'll cut back. Instead, he hiding it in the drawers. It's like, bruh. That's how you know it's an addiction. That's how you know it's a problem. Is when you start hiding it in drawers and when you in denial. Okay. People use things. People, look, everybody has a pacifier. What do I mean by that? Just a, something something that, you know, adult adult pacifiers. Something to help them cope mentally, psychologically. Some people smoke cigars. Some people smoke cigarettes. Some people drink alcohol. Some people gamble. Some people addicted to, you know, intimacies. Some people... Uh, you know, uh, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of vices out there that you can really get addicted to. Okay, if you if if anybody watching right now is addicted to anything, go get some help. Okay, I want a better life for you, for real. And this is serious face. I want a better life for you. Go get some help. Denial is not going to help you. Okay, if you have more than one person telling you the same thing, it's probably true. Okay, let me say that again. If you have more than one person telling you something about yourself, it is probably true. Go get some help. Let's go back in. This is not the only addiction that is concerning you. No, he have a gambling addiction. Oh he has $17,000 that he won. A week later, he only had $100 in the account. You don't complain when I win it and excuse me, I withdrew that money. How do you know where the $17,000 went? I don't know. Exactly. Miss Parr? But I know he spent a lot of money on gambling. Your Honor, I wanted to tell you about another situation. I'm here. I come home from work and I was talking to my teenage daughter. Michael comes and he goes in the room and he give me this eye. So I'm already knowing that, you know, he's upset. So he go downstairs, I'm trying to talk to him. He shut me out, he don't want to talk to me, he upset. We get in an argument and he like, you can go, you can get out. I submitted a video to the court of evidence of Michael um, kicking me out. I'd like to see the evidence. Oh. Cooler. What did I do to you? I was upstairs talking to my daughter. Uh, you just talk too much and I'm sick of that. So you can take your dumb, judgmental, drunk. Boom, we'll see you can record. She drunk, she drunk all. I'm a reader. Can't talk to nobody. Nah. What is that about? She had been drinking as well, but we never, she never puts that out there. We've had it's no very clear to me that y'all don't wine. need to have any alcohol in y'all's house. That might be the case, Your Honor. That might be the case, but again, mm -hmm. she puts all this on me as, as I'm just I'm just I don't drink it. every day. But when you drink, it's very aggressive. That's not true. Oh, well, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. The first time the man that I love says all that to me, that's the last time he's gonna say it to me. And Your Honor, he only do it when he drinks. We have never had one argument while he's sober. You say that this is not the only addiction that is concerning you. No, he have a gambling addiction. What do you mm. mean he has a gambling mm. addiction? He have an app on his phone where he gambles. One day I went into the app. He has $17,000 that he won in oh. the app. When I went back a week later, <laughs> he gambled all of that money. He only had $100 in the account. You don't complain when I went in and, excuse me, I withdrew that money. That's what I'm saying. She don't even know it, what she's talking it, about, Your Honor. Still, I'm able to get her flowers. Can we see that? Can we see that right there? See, what am I looking for? What I'm purchasing her, purchasing her with my complete gambling addiction and winnings. Did Can you I submit show you that? some evidence? Yes, I sure I did. Let me see that evidence. Can we see? Let's start with the flowers. How about that? That's $100 right there. How, excuse me, I, unless I miss my guess, that's not $17,000 yeah. for the No, that's just one thing. That's just one thing. I have another, uh, another. Okay, is, let me see. Is, is, see what else. Is, is he supposed to spend the whole 17 grand on her? Come on, judge. That, one, that ain't fair. 
You think if she won 17 grand, she would spend it all on him? Probably not. Okay. What am I looking at now? You'll be looking at our closet. Okay, this is your closet yeah. that you want me to see. So let's see. If you look at that, that's our closet. That's lavish. She has no complaints with that, whether it's being my winners or anything. He thinks buying things but you make accept. up for his she drinking. She accepts it, though, with a smile. And his anger when he gets drunk. Okay, so have you ever been in a situation where you face eviction Absolutely or not. homelessness or anything like that? Absolutely not. Your Honor. Mr. Herod, I'm, I'm actually trying to find out why you say there's an addiction. Because when there's an addiction and there's money that's missing and it's money that impacts on the family's financial future, it's that kind of thing. So that's the point that you need to make if you say that there's some sort of gambling problem. He blew the $17,000. How do you know where the $17,000 went? I don't know. Exactly. Miss Par Miss Parm? But I know he spent a lot of money on gambling. He won't tell me how much okay, he so lost. Okay, so let me tell you, this is the thing about evidence. If you don't have any, you can't make the accusation. Mm -hmm. Because right now, you have not made an accusation against Mr. Parham that suggests that he has a gambling addiction. He may like sports, he may bet on a couple of games, but until you tell me that that has impacted on your family's financial situation, then you can't make an accusation against this man and what he right. spends money on. Well, as long honor, as your, fa your family is taken care of. Let me ask the witness to join us. Will you please state your name for the court? I'm Maria Harris. And Ms. Harris, what's your relationship to the plaintiff and the defendant? That's my mom and Mike is my stepdad. Tell me about the dynamic between them. Mike is a great man, so I don't know why my mom just trying to make it seem like he's a bad guy in this situation when the reason Mike drinks is because of her. Wow, the daughter took the stepdad side. Wow. <clears throat> it gets a little deeper now because now, uh, as a character witness, that's that's pretty big. That's pretty huge. Daughters normally don't go against their mother, especially their real mother, to side with their stepdad. So this this a pretty big uh, thing here. So. We got to hold some judgment here and uh, dive a little deeper into this. This is my first time seeing this, y'all. I didn't see this. Let's, let's go in. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. I'm literally at my wit's end about an accusation about the gambling addiction. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm concerned about your alcoholism. Okay. And it says to me that you don't have your drinking under control and you bring anger into the household when you don't have drinking under control and that leads to a toxic environment. And for that reason, I'm gonna ask the witness to join us because I'd like to find out from someone who actually lives in the environment. And even her daughter knows I treat her great. Let me ask the witness to join us, please, Robert. I didn't say you didn't, you just drink. You just exaggerate, man. Will you please state your name? For the court. I'm Maria Harris. And Ms. Harris, what's your relationship to the plaintiff and the defendant? That's my mom and Mike is my stepdad. Tell me about the dynamic between them. Well, she's saying that Mike is, he drinks a lot, but that's not true. Like, the reason Mike drink is because of her. She mm. work a lot. She's not saying why he drinking or why he doing what he doing is because of her. He showed all my mom kids. He called us his bonus kids. He showed even my daughter. He show her affection. She loves him. Mike is a great man, so I don't know why my mom just trying to make it seem like he's a bad guy in this situation when she have her wrongs too. She's not there in, every day. Mike, Harris, what's are you. really going on? Neither are you. Miss Harris, what's really going on? Why are you mm. mad? That's hurtful for my daughter to... I know. I mean, I don't know, I work. And there's I nothing work. wrong with you working and there's nothing wrong with you having goals and ambitions. But why is it your daughter's perception that you may be one of the reasons that Mr. Parham is drinking to excess? What's going on with the family? I don't know why she would say that. I do work a lot, and I do think, think that he drinks out of boredom. I'm going to need 
some additional help in that regard. Thank you very much, Ms. Harris. I appreciate you. Ms. Parm, I really do think, because I said this and I shared it with you, that I'm concerned about the allegations of drinking and how it manifests itself in your household. But So I think you could benefit from some professional advice. So I'd like to bring in Paul Burkhalter. He's an associate professional counselor and addiction specialist from Towler Counseling and Centered Recovery. Robert, will you please ask the witness to join us? Sure. Yeah, um, for the daughter to, uh, I don't know what the hell picture this is, but um, anyway, okay, okay, I get what's going on. Anyway, um, <laughs> for the daughter to join a, the stepfather, that's that's a bit surprising. I could tell the the, the, the wife was hurt about that a little bit. But it does kind of lend itself to say that maybe, you know, look, men always got to dig themselves out of a hole when they come in, in the court. OK, so the daughter's kind of stepping up for his defense. That was powerful. She dug him out of a hole a bit. Now, I think they're a bit on equal playing field. Now, listen, I'm not giving this guy an out when it comes to the addictions okay um if he got some addictions he do need to seek help uh it sounds like he's bored because his woman is working all the time what the hell is she doing working all the time i don't know but she probably some i don't know what she does for a living i miss that but um yeah he's probably bored all the time because she's at work so he drinks just to not be bored but he got and he gambles a little bit so so it is a bit of boredom so this guy was it will probably have to substitute what he does with a different type of a healthy hobby maybe instead of drinking and and gambling he can work out a regiment where he goes to the gym you know slim down lose weight and that can become see addiction addictions can be you can have some good ones and you can have some bad ones he got some bad ones right now gambling and drinking okay he needs to switch those to uh nutrition and working out uh, you know that's that's what he needs to switch him to um that way he got something to do while his girl is working and he's getting himself healthy and in, in tip top shape and and kind of killing two birds and and getting rid of the boredom also so maybe he can do that i think he has an addiction mentality but if he switches it to something healthy like gym rat it could be a it could end up being a good thing that's working out for him let's see what this doc say on occasion miss harrod and mr parm i ask for some expert witnesses to come in so that they can give me some insight so that I can best advise you. Mr. Barcarthel, thank you very much for joining me. Could you explain to the court what's your specialty? Yes, I work specifically in uh, addictions, um, recovery, as well as marriage and family therapy. Help me to identify some of the triggers yeah. that Mr. Paraman and Ms. Herod are encountering. I mean, one of the big triggers that I hear, which is extremely common, uh, is boredom, mm -hmm. right? Taking care of the kids. Taking care of the kids. Everything. There's that stress going on. So it's um, boredom and stress. Sounds like it. What strategies can the defendant use to manage his cravings for alcohol as well as alleviate some of the stress and the boredom? So one of my favorite uh, techniques to utilize is mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Right. This is all about uh, trying to stay grounded in the present moment. Right. Being in touch with what you're experiencing in your body. If you're having emotions that you don't want to deal with, being able to simply acknowledge them, verbalize them, sit with them, recognizing that they can pass. I suffer from PTSD. I've been diagnosed. So sometimes that kind of helps me cope with things or whatnot. Do you acknowledge that you have more drinks than you probably need to have? I will attribute that to grief as well, grief and trauma. 
Mr. Burkhalter, do you hear what uh, Ms. Parham is saying? Yes, and what specifically is uh, most concerning to me is hearing about PTSD. Uh, trauma is a very common predecessor to addiction. I've seen deaths, I have nightmares, and then to go with new deaths or whatnot within my family, that's just contributed to more, like I said, I don't have any other outlet. It sounds to me that you are self-medicating and self-medicating can lead to addiction. Mr. Burkhalter, I'm going to offer Mr. Parham the opportunity to enter into some outpatient counseling sessions, and I understand that you and your colleagues would be helpful in making those kinds of recommendations. Absolutely. I would appreciate that. Mr. Parham, would you take me up on that offer? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Harrod, can you be a supportive partner during this part of his journey? Yes, I, I love him. He is awesome. He is amazing to me. He spoils me, he spoils my children. I just don't want anything to happen to him. Mr. Burkhalter, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your area of expertise and I am going to take you up on that offer. And see, and that's the thing. Um, <clears throat> she really loves him, but she's gone through trauma herself. Her ex-husband and her brother was taken out. She is trying to save herself from another tragedy, from more trauma. That's what she's trying to do. It's not that he's not a good guy. He treats her good, but she sees the writing on the wall. Okay. And that's why she's like giving him ultimatums or whatever the case may be. Um, the daughter is like, I don't want to leave this guy. He's a great guy. Mike is great. I can, I, I can see that. So look, the daughter don't want to leave. The daughter is like, don't try to bring me no more stepdaddies. I don't, I don't want no more. I want him. So there is trauma all over the place. He has trauma. He's probably seen some people taken out. She's seen some people lost. Uh, she's gone all the time. He don't have nobody to to have an outlet with. So he's hugging the bottle, so to speak. And it's causing problems. And I'm glad the brother said he will get help for this. And I'm glad, uh, you know, Judge Starr and this uh, counselor is going to help him out. Let's see how it go. Because I think what is absolutely imperative for the two of you is for you all to figure out how to get back to each other and to get that emotional connection. Ms. Harrod, you are able to build your business and build your career. And Mr. Parm is going to have to learn to cope without you being there. And so what we're going to put in place, in addition to address the actual core of the reasons behind the um, excessive alcohol drinking is to see what it is you need in your life to help you feel more fulfilled so that you don't fill your time with alcohol or doing something that's destructive both physically and emotionally. Okay. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, Your Honor. And I love this woman as well. She's awesome and I'm willing to do whatever's necessary to bring our union together. That's what's up. I hear love on both sides. I hear willingness up. to be supportive of each other on both sides. And most importantly, I hear willingness to address an issue head on from you, Mr. Parm. Yes, Your Honor. That's what this is supposed to be about. Let's find common ground and let's fix this. Yeah, that's what's up. And, you know, uh, I, I think the brother should, uh, you know, get a gym regimen and just get addicted to working out. I think that could be his next addiction that he gets, and that's a healthy one. He started doing the whole nutrition thing, started doing the whole gym thing, and, you know, he's at the gym while she's still at work. It works out. He ain't bored. Nobody's home. Like, I don't know what the situation is with him taking care of his kids, he said. It looked like the kids is grown. I don't know. But um, I think that that should be his next wave of things. I don't think the gambling thing is an issue because they're not out of house and home. So if it's not causing financial problems, I don't think that that's really an addiction. 
So I think she was reaching a little bit with that. I mean, all she talked about was the dude winning. <laughs> 17 grand. So uh, she didn't complain when he got her those Gucci purses and all that other stuff. So uh, there you have it. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. Um, I, I think the brother should uh, find a new addiction, a new healthy addiction. Um, those nightmares that he's having. I don't know. He probably going to need some couch time, some counseling, and maybe even some meds to help him get some deeper sleep or whatever. And, uh, you know, get that gym rat, uh, you know, thing going and kind of work himself out of this situation. Uh, maybe she could join them too sometimes, you know, go, they both go to the gym together or whatever and, and work it out a little bit. But I'm glad he did decide to uh, make a change and hopefully I'm wishing them the best. Even the daughter want them to work it out. So hopefully they will. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Really would appreciate that. Hit the like, share and subscribe for real. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.